I am a bloody fool. I've had nothing but an apple and a cookie today, and it is 4.49 in the afternoon, and it's darn near 100 degrees. Just kidding, it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm in a car. Thankfully, there's some cold air blowing in my beautiful nostrils. Ideals, what are they? Especially in context of relationship. Um, it can kind of go to either friendship relationships or, or romantic, but kind of more focusing on the romantic side because that is where we are most vulnerable and kind of have higher expectation um, because we are much more open um, to someone who in a more who is in a more romantic space with us. Um, I kind of noticed that there are two different sides that ideals initially kind of sprout from, but it can probably come from many different areas. But like, I think if I were to wrap up an ideal. It is a savior complex. This person is saving me from something or is validating me in something. So you can either have an ideal set up by you grew up in a certain community or situation where like this is the right kind of person you ought to be pursuing, who they are, your relationship with them, how it develops and all that stuff. And so you pursuing a certain kind of person is then correct and right and seen as positive within um, the group. And then um, there's kind of the other side where ideals can, I guess, kind of come from an, a projection from ourselves where like we are lacking in a certain area. And that can either be that we recognize certain things in ourselves where we're lacking in a certain area. And I guess I get it because like the other thing I was kind of trying to tie to is like hurts. Um, and pains and like somehow this ideal becomes um, a, a, like a savior complex to save us from either our own lack of, um, I guess you could say responsibility or ability to excel in a certain area. So I need you to um, be in that space. And then also like, actually for me, and I'm gonna share some of mine um, for me personally, like, being in a hurt spot, for instance, and this ideal is meant to save you from um, from the struggles that you are having, and everything about them is, I guess, pleasing, wonderful, and it it draws you away from hurt and pain, and in in them is full security and safety, um, and you never have to worry that they will represent anything harmful. Um, like even in your past um, or what you've correlated in your mind. Um, so like for me personally, um, in kind of losing a lot of direction in life um, within the last, I don't know, four years or so, because I went to the film school and ended up um, trying to pursue all that and then some other stuff just kind of come along and I kind of talk about it throughout some of the videos I have. Um, just kind of some life stuff, just kind of really threw me for a loop of like, I actually have no idea where I'm going in life and what I'm trying to pursue or um, succeed in. And so this, that started an ideal of like, well, what if somebody, they might have a clearer vision of where they want to go in life and I can maybe better support them in it or like kind of jump on board with them. Or just the fact that you're two people trying to navigate together and so you kind of talk about it and between you and them, you can all end up finding um, some clarity as to where to go in life. But when pretty much what ends up being is that I don't really, I don't have the self motivation anymore to carry on my own purpose, and so I want to adopt the purpose of somebody else. And then, throughout just kind of painful experiences, um, I would end up kind of fashioning this person that they have to basically be perfect so that they don't hurt me and I can feel safe and quite frankly I can hide I would say in them like surrounding surrounded by them where I'm hidden from the world and the world is no longer capable of hurting me it's uh, it's tough and and uh, dangerous out there and I don't um, want to be basically any part of it and so this person would uh, be that savior complex, so to speak. Um, and then I would also notice that just kind of as time goes on, um, I would kind of treat every person as a buffet, 
like you notice these traits and you just kind of pick and pick and pick and pick and pick and then you get to a point where you you picked out all of the traits that you really admire and enjoy and you put them all together and you say this is the person I want to um, to find because you know this person might have this trait but you can see you know the, the like every good has a bad so to speak where they someone might be strong in one way is going to be weak in another and so I would see the weakness but I would notice that the strength of this other person would be the counterbalance of the weakness of this other person and so if you go, well, if you just get the strength of this person and the strength of that person, you put them together, then you end up finding, okay, this is the kind of person I need to find in my life. But it ends up getting to a point where it's like, you're, you're collecting so many different things and you're making it an impossible person that just simply doesn't exist. Um, and then like from there you start having like heavy expectations of how you're going to be treated or how you're going um like how you're going to be experiencing the relationship and especially if you watch other relationships and you kind of find like joy in in the thought of you and uh going into that kind of space with somebody um then you start creating all these expectations of how um how it's supposed to be but you also don't aren't aware of why the people are in the space that they are you just see the outcome of something and you just want that but you don't actually know that the steps going into um, that kind of space like how close they might be or how they treat each other talk to each other like how they like even touch or uh, just any kind of just mannerisms back and forth um, not being cognizant of how you get there you just know you want it you just don't know how to actually get it um, but then that actually shows that like for me personally not knowing that certain p things that I've kind of deemed were just silly are actually critical in healthy relationships um, and so me realizing that I've had quite a broken perspective of um, what is valuable and um, good especially if it resembles any types that I may not be so fond of, like ISTJs or ESTJs. Um, um, not that I would say, I mean, those people are great, but there are certain types where you just kind of have a natural conflict with. And, but you realize that they have pieces that actually are really good and grounded um, for, um, for relationship um, and every other, and other types as well. But it's like, not just holding on to my strengths, but also realizing that I have diminished other strengths and never was able to grow in them. But also hurt is a good um, stunting to keep us from growing. And so what ends up happening, unfortunately, is that you are trying to engage with a person, but you're you know, constantly battling with a sense of disappointment, but it's because you are, you're projecting all of these expectations that aren't even they're not even nearly grounded um to a sense of reality especially if if you're expecting them to fulfill shoes that they just simply can't and it's your responsibility to actually come face to face with your own hurts or your own misunderstandings or your own responsibility in life that is not their place to fulfill um and they will they will be in an endless search of trying to figure out if, endless search of trying to please you, um, and you can, you'll never be fulfilled, so to speak, um, until you come face to face with reality and realizing that where these things are coming from and why, um, you know, why you're feeling a dissonance. Because I know in my past, I've been really, diff it's been difficult trying to enter into relationship with a woman it just never could quite go far enough because um i would just kind of recede or you know i just kind of see certain traits as dangerous or not good and so I, I would protect myself from potential catastrophes of the future um and there's a place for that there's you know discernment where you can see certain things like no this this isn't and being able to make the choice but a lot of times it's hard to um to make that choice we're kind of you know motivated by compulsion we want something to validate our 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 decision about something so if i see you as dangerous 
then it's more validating to say, you know, this isn't gonna work because you're a, you're a threat. But maybe they're not a threat and you're just afraid, you know? And, and because they don't imitate your expectations, you end up actually missing out on a great opportunity with somebody all because they don't, or they, they trigger your, your threat mechanism and um, you're wanting that to justify a decision but then you end up finding out that making that decision would be more harmful, or at least it would, you would be missing out on a better opportunity um, or a good opportunity um, just with them um, as a relationship. Um, and yeah, so there's like a weird space of needing to recognize that people are people and they have their bumps and bruises, they're good and bad. And it's also really humbling because you realize that you yourself aren't that, you know, impressive. You're impressive, but not at the ideal standard. Um, but actually, here's another thing about ideals is that they, so this is something I recognize myself. If I got my ideal woman, I will, I will always be driven um, in a cycle of perfection perfectionism like I would never get out of, of a mindset of accepting or of just acceptance I would always be seeking out problems but then finding no problems and so you but you're but you're just so perfection perfectionistic and then I wouldn't be able to deal with my own responsibilities and then I would never be able to um, truly heal uh, from just the things in the past because you know if it's their responsibility to always have me feel at peace and healed, then I'm not actually truly embracing my own healing. So ideals are actually really dangerous in that because they'll end up destroying you um, um, if you truly got them. So reality is actually a lot better. It is, it can be painful because then you realize um, you, re you have to face a lot of hard stuff in yourself um, and yeah, just kind of there, there is kind of a sorrow in it because um, especially depending how long you might have been sitting in that ideal um, but then as you climb out of that and in the person you are trying to pursue or if you end up pursuing somebody um, you're able to see their strengths and how truly valuable they are to you and um, building an honest genuine relationship and that's where real love can start to to form and until then the only perspective and the only drive is yourself and your own wants and wishes and it's a very selfish ambition but if you're there for the person and you're and you're truly seeing what's about them that you are fighting for um, then you can you can be able to really see and value them and kind of be more them minded rather than just kind of selfishly minded. There is a place for selfishness, I would say, because you don't want just anyone in your life. <laughs> That's a very intimate space, and that is something to protect. Um, and so you would want to make sure that what they are providing is something of, of value to who you are, and being very cognizant of, even if, if what they're providing is hard, maybe realizing like, oh, that's actually really good for me. Like you challenge me in this way. And I, and I really value that um, as, as well as all the other wonderful things. And then, yeah, so then that's where true love can start and you guys really start working to bettering yourselves and each other and um, in the context of reality rather than all those ideal stuff. So, that was just a ramble, and I hope it was helpful for somebody. Um, let me know your experiences below. If like, if you know you have an ideal or are wrestling with an ideal, or in the past you have been able to overcome an ideal, what were some key things that really helped you um, overcome that? And um, just like who, if you are with somebody, what's about them that really draws you in? Um, that encourages a strong bond and relationship with them. I'd love to hear it. And any other relationship stuff that's correlated to yeah, just the battle of idealism and where if you have identified where yours have come from, um, I'd love to hear that because mine is just my experience. And I've heard some people's experiences with idealism, um, but everyone kind of has their own 
story with it. So let me know in the comment section below. And uh, I'll see you in another, uh, that, was, that was a mess up. I messed up. I'll see you in another video in another life you never know. I'm liking this beard. You know, I think I'm just gonna keep it. And I'm gonna let it grow. I don't know where it's gonna go. I wish I could get a little more right here though. It doesn't really grow there. But 